Hi, welcome to this video series on Y Acoustics. Uh, we appreciate your interest in learning more about uh, acoustics related to room acoustics and architectural acoustics. Now, uh, in this session, we are going to talk about sound propagation, frequency versus wavelength, and the speed of sound. This is a very familiar curve. We call it as a sine wave or a sinusoidal wave, which you we all must have studied during the primary school. Okay, and uh, this is one complete cycle, and it has a peak and there is a trough. Okay. Now here, this x-axis is a time axis, as we all know. A is a amplitude, and this is a sine wave that is used typically in all electrical and electronics study. Now, when you are going to study about the sound propagation, let us use the same sinusoidal curve, but with a slight difference of these parameters. And this central y x axis is going to be the atmospheric pressure. Okay, atmospheric pressure. Okay, and this is the variation of the pressure in the air. Now, how does the sound propagate in air? Okay, the sound propagation in air is longitudinal. Okay, what is longitudinal? Okay, the longitudinal wave will have a pattern something like this, which is having a compression and a rarefaction. It is nothing but the air molecules are very highly concentrated in this particular region when there is a peak. And when there is a trough, here it is going to be a rarefaction where the the uh, the concentration of the air molecules are much less. So you can see the pressure which is higher here and here it is lower here. Basically this y axis is a pressure of the air molecules in the air. So this is the direction of sound. When there is a direction of the, when the sound is going to travel in this direction, the air molecules are going to oscillate in this particular fashion. It is not that the air molecules from here is going to travel all the way. Not like that. It is going to have, see here at this compression, it is going to compress here and here it is going to expand. So same way this pattern, like a spring, when you just uh, pull out the spring, how it oscillates, same way the air molecules in this direction is going to have the variation and this is how the sound is going to travel. Okay. Now coming to this uh, frequency and the wavelength relation, how it is related to sound. Okay. Now we in the previous session we studied uh, the wavelength and the frequency relation with the speed of the sound. The speed of the sound we have seen that it is three forty four meters per second. But let us remember something like this: three four five meters per second. Okay. 3, 4, 5, easier to remember, right? So this is a magic number. 3, 4, 5 meters per second is the speed of sound. Okay. Now this is a constant, which means the frequency and wavelength is going to vary. Now here, we can also convert this into kilometers per hour. Okay. Which is going to be 1, 2, 4, 2. Okay. Why kilometers per hour? Because we are just familiar with the speed of the vehicle and all that. And just to give an idea, this is how the speed of the sound is going to be. 1, 2, 4, 2 kilometers per hour. Okay. And there is one more in interesting thing is, when any object, when any object travels in air, which is getting closer to the speed of the sound, then there is another term that we use is called Mach. Okay. Mach 1. Okay, Mach 1, this, the speed of the sound is Mach 1 when the speed is 1 to 4 to kilometers per hour. Okay, so this particular term is used in aerodynamics just for information. Okay, so Mach 1 and uh, any of the uh, big aircraft like uh, Boeing, all that will be traveling at 0.85 something like that, Mach, and uh, some aircraft which is speed uh, which is going at a speed higher than the speed of the sound is going to be 1.1 or something and we call that as supersonic speed okay coming back to the relation between the frequency and wavelength now here you see there are two particular waves okay here you see is more expanded where the wavelength is higher and here it is lower okay 
Now here the difference is this is a low frequency and this is high frequency. Just remember this fact. Low frequency will have an expanded uh, sinusoidal wave and high frequency is going to be very much compressed. Now let us figuratively understand what the relationship between the frequency and wavelength is. Now speed of the sound C is equal to frequency times wavelength that is when frequency is going to increase wavelength is going to decrease okay. Now we are going to plot a x and y axis okay and in this x axis let us plot a frequency and here a wavelength okay. If we plot a curve based on this particular constant and frequency and wavelength is going to be a straight line something like this. Let us take two points, two points okay and this point let us mark it as 20 and 20 kilohertz. Okay, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz which is the audio frequency which our human ears can listen which we all know. Okay, what is going to be the corresponding wavelength? Just remember when you ca calculate based on this particular formula, this is going to be 17 meters. Okay, I'm just rounding off this figure and here it is 17 millimeters. Okay, just remember these two numbers. 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, 17 millimeters, 17 meters. That means when the frequency is low, 20 hertz, the wavelength is going to be high, which is 17 meters. And when frequency is higher, which is 20 kilohertz, the wavelength is going to be lesser, which is 17 millimeter. Just remember this fact because these um, facts are very important when we are going to study about room acoustics, where we are going to uh, relate this with the size of the rooms and all that. And one more important fact here is the low frequency. As you see, this is much expanded where the wavelength is higher and here the wavelength is lower. And why I've shaded this area. So which means the area under this curve, the area under this curve is much higher compared to high frequency. So what it means? So it means the energy in a low frequency is much higher and the energy in a high frequency is much lower. It also translates to reality that for low frequency we need more power to more energy to produce low frequency and for high frequency we need just less energy or less power to create this high frequency. So these are the relationship between the frequency wavelength and the speed of the sound. I hope you enjoyed this particular session. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe for watching the subsequent series of this video. Thanks for watching.